See that lone pine up on that hill over there? What are we actually doing right now? The kids are just wild out there. They're wild. But they're having a good time, you know? They're having a good time. This is Untamed, Unbroken, The Adventurer's Guide, and I'm your host, Blake Bredesen. Welcome, everyone, to Untamed, Unbroken. Today, we have a camping Q&A. And this may be geared a little bit towards beginners, but I think even the experienced, more experienced campers will get some, some good info from this. I feel like, if anything, maybe a good refresher and an idea of kind of what I do, I guess, on some of these. Let's get right into it. Question number one, what gear do I need for camping? And so this is basic beginner campers here. The basics you need to think about really are you need some sort of shelter or sleep system. You need some sort of cutting tools and wood processing. You need rope or cordage. You need a way to cook, whether that's fire or stove. I would have both in the back pocket. You need a way to purify water or or have drinkable water. And you need to prepare for emergencies, whether that's having a good kit on you and having emergency communication devices with you. That's the basics. Now, when it comes to shelter sleep system, we can talk tents, sleeping bags, sleeping pad, or an air mattress. Maybe you're car camping, you just have an air mattress, some blankets, bring in a pillow. Small camp pillows are great, or you can just bring a pillowcase and stuff that with some soft clothes. That's a great option to do if you're kind of going the ultra light. Some people will just use their, if they have a down jacket or down pants or that puffy jacket type of thing, they'll use that as their their pillow at night. And that's a good ultra use when you're trying to go lighter. As far as tent, you don't have to get the most expensive things. You can get a tent for $100 and it will work just fine. Same thing with sleeping bags. You don't have to spend a ton of money on sleeping bags. I have a hike and bike 15 degree bag. It has synthetic down. It packs down really small. It's really nice and it's all around and it's universal. I bought my daughter a kid's Big Agnes, which, you know, brand name, Big Agnes. But that also was only $100 to $130. I think mine was like $130. So, You could spend $900 if you wanted, but you can also spend $70 on a decent sleeping bag. If you're looking for a summer sleeping bag, an even lighter weight one, you can get them for $20, $30 on Amazon and they work just fine. I've slept with one of those summer bags with a sleeping bag liner in October in Northern Minnesota. Was I a little cold? Yes. Would I do it again? No, I would bring my 15 degree bag, but I was, I was totally fine when I was kind of bundled up with some socks, sweats, and a hat on sweatshirt sleeping in that. I was good. It just wasn't the most comfortable sleeping, but I'm just saying you can get by with a lot thinking about cooking and food. So maybe you want to cook over the fire. That's one thing. Then you need the right stuff for that. Maybe that's a a ferrule rod, maybe it's just a lighter, matches. I would say always bring some matches, some waterproof matches, windproof matches, whatever it is. But then just having a stove and fuel and some cook cookware. I would go with something like GSI for your if it's your first time getting some gear. GSI makes some good cookware that n- it nests into each other. So you kind of have like the plates and the utensils, the a little cup and they nest inside of each other and they make for a pretty small, compact little cook kit. And so think about that. I like to have a, a spork, my own titanium spork with a long handle, which is nice if you're doing freeze dried meals and eating out of the bag, that's the best way to do it there. Cordage, we're talking about cordage or rope paracord is great and all around whether that's a 550 or a 750 or even a 950 paracord just that's the thickness and the number of 
strands, I believe, on the inside, or it's their weight rating. 550 is maybe 550 pounds. I could be wrong. It's been a long time since I've even thought about any of that. I also don't use it for, I don't use them for climbing or anything like that, but it's good to have a bunch of rope around because you're going to use it. One, it's good for emergencies. Two, hanging a ridge line to hang a tarp, hang, hang food up in a tree, just have some rope because you could use it. You could turn, if, you know, paracord that can dig in pretty good if you needed to use a makeshift uh, tourniquet. That's going to be a, a good option. We're going to talk a little bit more about the clothing and footwear part in a bit. Water purification. This one for me is pretty simple. I like a Catadyne beef free water filter. It's like a one liter sack bladder. And then you the filters right out of that. Super easy. Life straw is another one. You could use gravity filters. You can use pills that purify the water. You can use UV filters or UV pen lights. There's a lot of options there too. And then there's always the old fashioned boil your water. And then emergencies, have a good first aid kit. Make sure you have sunscreen, insect repellent, and make sure you have some sort of satellite communication device. If you're going off grid, if you're going out of cell service, have it with. Have one and have it with. Cutting tools. I like to personally bring a Leatherman. I always have a Spider Co. pocket knife on me pretty much every day. That's like everyday carry. I always have that on me. And so I don't change that for a camping trip. But then I add a multi-tool. And then I add either a 4-inch fixed blade or a 7-inch fixed blade. I have both. And I like those for particular for like processing wood and smaller chunks of wood, maybe four inch diameter to, you know, a one, one and a half or two inch diameter. You can put that knife on top, use another piece of wood and hit kind of the edge, the, the tip of the knife, almost like the, the inch or two leading to the tip of the knife. And you have that and you just kind of baton it and you can split wood that way. It's a really nice way to split wood. Folding saws, maybe a hatchet. It's all up to you on what you want to bring. I like to bring a folding saw and a hatchet and a big knife. Is that overkill? Maybe, but they come in handy if you don't mind carrying a little bit more weight. Another good one is bring duct tape. Bring duct tape, trash bags, some fire starter, bring some sort of light, headlamp, visor light, regular flashlight works too. That kind of does it for the gear, like the really the essential gear. And then it's just bringing any personal items you'd like to bring. If you want a camp chair, bring a tarp for over the, for over a camp. Dry bags. I do pack everything in dry bags clothing and dry bags, any electronics that I have or extra batteries go into dry bags. Those are super nice to have. Maybe a hammock, power banks for sure. Bring a book, game, entertainment, whatever. You know, those are just optional things, extra things, but that kind of does it for the gear. The essential stuff you want to focus on gear wise is going to be your, your shelter and your sleep system, cutting tools, rope, anything to do with cooking and fire and water purification and then dealing with emergencies. Some of the things you really want to think about and you don't have to spend a ton of money on gear. You can go get anything you need from Walmart for the most part or any other store that you can think of fleet farm, farm and fleet Menards. Menards even has a, it's just, you can go anywhere. REI, whatever. It doesn't matter. Amazon. You can get anything and everything on Amazon. Let's move on to question number two. What clothing is best for camping? Now, this one, I have high-end clothing and I have lower-end clothing. Both work well. In fact, some of the pants I have, I just bought off Amazon, and they're kind of like my favorite pants to go out camping. They're lightweight, they're stretchy, they're breathable, and they dry insanely quick. And so it's like I have some Eddie Bauer pants that are super nice, stretchy and all that, but 
I like these cheap ones from Amazon almost even better. But when it comes to clothing, avoid cotton. When you were talking about base layers, insulating layers, and outer layers. Base layers, you just want something that's moisture wickening. Maybe that's merino wool. Maybe it's just some nice synthetic layer. Insulating, we're talking fleece or down. And you can do pants or jacket with that. Outer layer, it's got to be waterproof and windproof. Jacket and pants. Wear, just make sure it's comfortable. You can do waterproof depending on the time of year. You could just do keen sandals or something like that. Socks, wool, or synthetic. Again, I don't do any cotton on the feet. Hat and gloves. Warmth-wise, I have merino wool thin gloves I like to wear. Those are nice because if you're, they do get wet, which they often will on a camping trip, your hands will still stay warm with those. And then maybe just an extra pair of clothes. You don't have to get too crazy. The biggest thing here is just avoid cotton. Avoid cotton, especially in the winter. Avoid it. That's what I like for clothes. I like merino wool and I will wear merino wool long underwear with kind of a stretchy nylon with spandex or whatever type of, of pant. But search Amazon. Amazon's great for all this stuff too. You don't have to get name brand stuff. Question number three, this kind of, I guess, tied into the gear. I talked about it a little bit. Yeah, I already covered this. What kind of sleeping bag should I get? I talked about the ones that I like and have synthetic down is what I would go with personally. That's the synthetic down is the technology there has come a long ways. And then you get the benefits of it. If it does get wet, it still holds some of its warmth where if it's down and it gets wet, you lose your warmth factor. So that's personally what I would go with. And you don't have to spend, you know, you have to spend $200. I spent 130 on uh, hike and bike, and that I think that's spelled H Y K E B Y K E. I could be wrong there. It's a good, seems like a good sleeping bag. I've used it a handful of times. Just a 15 degree one, kind of the best all around is that 15 to 20 degree. And what that means, sleeping bag wise, is a 15 degree bag is the extreme temperature rating. So the comfort rating is really right around freezing, 30 or 32 degrees. So you want to keep that in mind when you are looking for a sleeping bag is the rating they give is the extreme rating. So add 15 degrees or so, maybe they'll give their comfort rating. It's always nice when they do. R value on sleeping pads, you can get by with an R value of one or two in the summer and totally fine. But in that springtime, in that fall time and wintertime especially, you're going to want an R value of three and a half or more, three or more for sure. I have the ones that I would do in the spring and fall have an R value of 5.1 and one is six. So last question of the day here is how should, related to sleeping bags again, sleeping pads is how should I store my sleeping bag and sleeping pad and maybe some other gear, but mainly the sleeping bag and sleeping pad was the question. And the answer is do not store it in your stuff sack. Store it either loose, hanging, you know, you can just fold that, fold, the, have the sleeping bag out and fold it over and hang it that way, maybe on some sort of hanger. Or you can put it in a loose, like loosely in a mesh, a mesh sack so it breathes and it's not completely packed down. That's how you should store your sleeping bag. Sleeping pad, again, don't. Don't store it all folded up. Just roll that thing out, put it on a shelf somewhere. I put it on the top shelf in our basement and our sleeping pads just sit up there and they inflate. They're self-inflating, so they inflate up and that's how I store them. And then when it's time to go, I pack them away. So that's how you should do that. Another thing to note with storing things is batteries Never store, if you're storing things that have batteries, take the batteries out. So never leave those batteries in while those items are in storage. So I learned that the hard way with a GPS back in like high school. And those, those batteries leaked acid and got everywhere and it ruined the device. Or I had to replace some, some of the things in there, the contacts, and clean it all up. There you have it. There's our Q&A today. 
yeah, if you have any other questions that you would like to see on the next Q&A episode, whether that's camping related or not, it doesn't always have to be camping. It's like camping is kind of what's on my mind right now, the time of year. But if it's hunting, if it's hiking, if it's just a family adventure, if you have questions, I would love to answer them in an, in an episode, put them together. Maybe it's doing things with, with kids. We have a two and a five-year-old. We love to be outdoors. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's related to canoeing or wilderness camping. Throw those questions in and let me know. As always, stay wild. Thank you for sticking around. If you've enjoyed the show, don't forget to subscribe. Leave us a rating and review. Even one word, it helps a ton. Sincerely appreciate you guys. Thank you all. And we'll see you on the next one. Stay wild. You've been listening to Untamed, Unbroken, a Lone Pine Adventures original podcast. 